Okay, so this is chapter one, introduction to chemistry and measurement. So the first thing we need to talk about is graphing. Why do we do it? Well, we're showing relationships between two variables or two changing quantities. So we have both independent and dependent variables. Independent is what is not affected by lab conditions as it changes. It is changing, but it's not affected by things like temperature, nope, amount, nope. So the classic independent variable, whoops, is time. Time is gonna increase, so usually that is uh, what we call independent. Dependent is going to be changing as a result in the uh, independent variable or lab conditions. So <clears throat> this could be a whole bunch of stuff. A classic example is temperature. You could also have things like mass. You could have um, volume. You could have a whole bunch of other stuff. When you're making a graph, you're gonna place your variables on the axes. Independent is on the X, dependent is on the Y. So here we have our Y, here we have our X, this is where we have our independent, this is where we have our dependent, okay? When you label your axes, make sure you have your variable and units. You can't just say time, because can't time be measured in minutes, seconds, years? By the way, I made a mistake seconds is just us you know so time can be measured in various units you can't also say length because length can be measured in many different things so the units and the units should be in parentheses time and minutes you could also abbreviate could you abbreviate with just an m no because that's meters um you can't start right on your data value it has to be just a little bit above and just a little bit below unless you start at zero. If you start at zero, that's fine. You don't need a break, you just start wherever you want. So let's say my data starts at 45 and it goes up to 90. I don't have to start at zero because then I wouldn't have any data until over here. So instead, call this 40 and then you can have data almost at the beginning, okay? So you don't always have to start at zero, don't to start at zero. I mean, you can if your data makes sense, but you don't have to. This is always very important. Every year students have problems with this. Titling the graph. It has to be descriptive. Okay, temperature versus time. And actually, I'm gonna keep going. Um, of a salt water solution. Because obviously, um, as the time goes on, temperature could increase or decrease, depending on what you're doing in the lab. You cannot have a very general title because then you don't know what you're talking about. Dissolving lab, what does that mean? Uh, data points should always be circled. So if you've got a graph, and you're doing something like this, and we circle our data points, it shows intent. So let's say you try to erase and it doesn't really work out, doesn't matter. So you circle your data points, always. Yeah, that is circle. Best fit line or curve. So let's say you have data that looks like these things at the bottom. You can tell that this graph on the left is an increasing graph, this graph on the right is a decreasing graph, but you can see that they go up here on the left, they go up and then down, but then up again. But what is the general trend? The general trend is increase. And even though some of these here on the right, they tend to go up right around here, um, and then down, and then up, it's still a general downward trend. So what we do is we call it a best fit line or a curve. And this is where you kind of have to look at your graph 
and let it speak to you. I know that sounds silly, but some of them are lines and some of them are curves. So general trend, you ignore the data points that don't follow it. You don't cross them off, you don't erase those points, but you just don't include them. You will not connect the dots in a best fit line or curve. We'll draw a smooth line using a straight edge or ruler. And the curve would be freehand that shows a general trend of data points. So this graph on the left, I would start a little bit below my first point. I do not need to start here at the beginning. And you just go like that. Notice how I ignored these. I didn't delete them or erase them from my graph. <clears throat> They're still there. It just shows that the trend is like here. This one over here, I kind of saw a curve. If you saw a line, that's fine. By the way, I did not use a straight edge, but you should. So sometimes I'm gonna ask for a best fit line or curve. Sometimes I'm gonna ask you to, to connect the points. Um, so please read directions for that. <clears throat> so let's say we're taking lab data and the question is, how good is it? That's not the best English, but we'll go with it. So in order to have quote unquote good lab data, it has to be both accurate and precise. And here's the problem. A lot of times people use those two words interchangeably and they're not. So to define accuracy, it means how close you are to the true value. So if we're playing darts and you want to hit the center, if you are accurate, you would hit, okay, close to the middle. So if you know that hydrogen peroxide's true boiling point is 152.0 degrees Celsius, whoops, sorry, going the wrong way. Um, which of these data points are accurate, which means close to the true value? 152.3 is pretty darn close to 152. I'm going to say this is accurate. 151.6, that's really close, accurate. 157.9 is pretty far away, several degrees, so this is not inaccurate, and so is that. So these are within a couple degrees. These are too many. So accurate, close to the true value. On the other hand, precision or being precise means reproducibility. It means you can repeat it. You see, keep getting the same answer over and over. A lot of times I've seen it happen, you know, you're trying to shoot for something and like on basketball or something and you can't hit the basket, but you keep hitting the upper right corner of the, of the, of the backboard. It's like, I don't want that, but there is something to be said about keep getting that same thing. Here's a hypothetical question. Would the same data be observed if the experiment was repeated by several different people, uh, several different times? And if the answer is yes, that means it's precise. So a lot of times, um, here we have our dartboard. Accurate would be right here on the center. And again, I, let's not get into the semantics about games of, of uh, darts. Um, I know there are different games. But if you instead kept hitting, choo, 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 I don't know why that's so long. Gee, I kept hitting in the same general area, even though it's not where I wanted, there's something to be said that I kept hitting the same place. That's called precision. So once again, <clears throat> we've got the true boiling point of 152.0 degrees Celsius for hydrogen peroxide. Notice that these values are all a few degrees away. So they're not very accurate. However, between these, What's the difference? Um, 0.2 degrees Celsius. What's the difference here? I, I mean, I could do this is 0.2. No. Uh, yes, it is degrees Celsius. Anyways, um, <clears throat> I could do the math. But anyway, these are super close. 
putting me on the spot here. I'm getting nervous. I don't have my calculator right, right ready. Um, so since these are close together, we're going to call those uh, precise. That's because they are close together. They're not exactly what we wanted. We wanted 152, but it's not there. So a way to figure out, you know, quantitatively how good your lab data is, is to do a percent error. So let's make sure you're looking at reference table T, reference table T on the back. It includes the formula for percent error, which we'll get to in a second. So we have accepted values and we have measured values, but you need to be prepared for synonyms, words that mean the same thing, because depending on your um, word problem, you might see different ones. So things like the known, the standard, a true value, actual value, these are all synonyms. They mean the same thing as accepted. Measured value is where there's some error. Okay, these are things that are based on lab data. These are experimental values. Uh, anything that is a student, you know, student obtained, these are measured values. So your formula, whoops, sorry about that. Your formula is measured value minus accepted value, that quantity divided by your accepted value times 100. So your units have to be a percent sign. Even if you're comparing masses, which have grams, since we're doing a percent error, your units need to be percent. Also, you cannot have a negative percent error. So even if you have something like six grams and you're accepted as 10 grams, and so you would have a negative value, you may have to take an absolute value. So there are no negatives. So let's say you do all the math and you get negative 5% error. Uh, you did something wrong, go back, make sure that there are no negatives. Just multiply by negative one or something. Okay, here we go. During a lab experiment, hydrogen peroxide's boiling point was measured to be 154.5 degrees Celsius. Hydrogen peroxide's actual boiling point is 152. What is the percent error? So let's figure it out. Um, the measured value is 154.5, and the actual value is that 152 uh, degrees Celsius, percent error. So it really doesn't matter how you subtract as long as you get a positive value. So I'm gonna do 154.5 minus 152, Point zero, and that's going to be divided by 152.0 and that whole thing is going to be multiplied by 100. But if you jam it all on your calculator, you could mess up. So I like to press equals in between. So 154.5 minus 152.0 gives me 2.5. Now I'm going to divide it by 152. 2.5 divided by 152.0 is going to give me 0 0.01644 blah 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 but then you need to multiply that by a hundred and you get 1.6447 blah 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 so <clears throat> how many decimal places do we need well we're going to talk later about something called significant figures and i'm going to tell you that you would need four sig figs which would be 1.645 percent However, at this point in the game, if you said 1.6%, I'd call that good. Now, you see how our units within the question were degrees Celsius? Do not have degrees Celsius for your final units because it's a percent error. Okay? Uh, yeah. That's where we're going to stop. Okay. Take care.